What's up guys, it's your boy DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another case rack video. So I made the original video on the case rack. Well, let me disassemble this so you guys actually can see it. So this is the rack as you guys all know. If you haven't seen that video already, go watch that video so that way you can do it. As the title says, we're gonna be doing some additional modifications on this rack in this video. But I wanna point out some of the most common comments and questions you guys had in the first one. And probably one of the biggest comments or slash concerns, I guess, was about this right here, my analog Yamaha MG12 mixer. A lot of you guys were like, why would you use an analog one? Why don't you just buy a digital unit? Well, there's this, there's this thing called the coronavirus and uh, no events and uh, no money. So yes, I would love to have a nice digital rack in here, but I just don't have the money for one. And also, to be honest, I don't need the functionality of a digital one when I have this and this dry rack, so yeah. Another point a lot of people made was that I should use right angle connectors for these instead of straight connectors. Yeah, that, that'd be nice and all, but um, let's be honest, form and functionality here at an event, if I need to plug in another microphone in here, I need to have enough space so that I can put a normal connector in here because I probably don't have spare right angles laying around. That's why they're normal, and also I still gotta buy those like six inch jumpers. I haven't done that yet, they're on back order. The third and final main concern I saw was, why are you using bins when you could just buy some rack doors? If I turn it around, you guys can see it, I already went ahead and bought the bins and I'll, I'll show you guys these in a second. This one's kind of like all the accessories and then this is the main one with all the cables. But the main reason why I bought bins is for that reason right there. I can take the bin out of the thing and go to another event or I could just take it out and set it where we're setting up and go set this up in a different area. I'm not limited to just having drawers in here and also I don't know if you guys have looked at the price but a rack drawer cost quite a bit of money. $150-$200 for a big enough one. With this, I literally just grab this bin and I can go put the cables. I can open up the bin, I can access it, I can put it up on a higher shelf or a table where I can actually get into it a little bit better. Bins, they're cheaper and they just provide more form and functionality. Do they look as nice? No, but. So now that I addressed the three main concerns in the last video, let me tell you what I've done since then. So since the last video, I've made it to the hardware store and got some bolts and nuts to basically mount all of the ports on the bottom here that you guys can't see in this clip, but we're showing it right now. Mount them permanently there. And I've bought the bins, as you guys see. The bins are awesome. I will show you guys in depth what's all in them, but we got the bins that fit in here. And on the front of the rack, I have mounted the power strip so we have a bunch more outlets to be able to access easily from the outside of the rack. Now that I got you guys caught up to speed on the rack in terms of where it's at and why I did what I did, let's talk about what we're gonna be doing today. First off, if you remember the last video, I said one of the biggest things I need to do with this rack is label stuff. And believe it or not, I have never owned a label maker until now. I got a label maker. I'll link it in the description down below if any of you guys also want to get a label maker. This thing's dope. But we're going to be doing a bunch of labeling in this video to get everything labeled correctly. The next thing, and you guys probably saw it in the thumbnail already, is we need to address a issue. At events, when we go to set this up, we take the front and the back off, and we have the rack all ready to go and functionality-wise. But we have a problem. We have these. These lids over here that just take up space. It would be really convenient if for some way or somehow you could take this lid and turn it into a table. And that is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. I bought the table legs as well as the adapters to turn the two lids into side tables so that we'll have basically one big table across this using both the side lids or maybe just one if we need just one for the event we can use one and we can have literally a ginormous workstation table to utilize with this rack which is going to be sick. So let me show you guys the parts and everything we're gonna be doing and let's get into it. Now, believe it or not, finding the parts to do this online was actually really hard. I mean, if you guys know somewhere else that has these, but this is the, the, the website where I found it. Again, I'll link it in the description down below. Inside of it here, we have the table legs. 
and these do extend to different dimensions. So right here is one set of legs and we are going to be riveting this set of legs into the actual lid. So that way we have a fold out set of legs on this side and one on the other side. So I have two sets in here. Well, I'm gonna have to check my order, but it looks like I only bought enough for one side of the table because you need two of these to connect on both sides of the table. And it looks like I only have one set. So I guess I'm gonna have to make another update when I have the other set done, but I at least have the legs for both sides so we can do that today. So let me show you guys how these little things work. So these are kind of the connectors that we use to connect the lid to the side of the table. So what we do is this will actually go on the side of the rack. So this little flat piece will go on the side of the rack and then this piece right here will go on the side of the lid. And we actually drill a hole big enough so that you can put this little thing inside of the lid as well. So you got the lid right here and the lid will come up to the rack like so. And basically it slides into this slot and then it slides down and because of that top pin right there, it locks it. So you guys can kind of see it right there. It locks it in the place so that this will not come out now unless on the inside of the case, you pull this tab and then it'll slide out. So that is how these mechanisms work. They lock the side of the lid onto the side of the rack. So that way they're permanent. And then on the other side, you have the legs to support the lid. So that's what we're gonna be installing. Let's get into it. So the first step here, we're literally just eyeing up how we're gonna put the legs on. So that's what I'm doing right now is kind of just lining the legs up and then we'll be drilling holes and riveting these from the other side, from the top side into place with rivets and with some washers and these will be set to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure these out, make sure I have the right distance here and then we'll rivet in this part and then we'll worry about the, the supports part right here and then we will extend the legs to the height we need, make sure they're level and we'll mount our catch pins basically that will catch on the rack. So I'm gonna get working on this. Enjoy the time-lapse footage so don't be like me and have to redo the whole thing you guys were, were off camera but I had to drill out all my rivets and redo it because I mounted it backwards so this hinge if you have it up has to go up as well so that it folds down. I had this backwards so this hinge went straight into this and it wouldn't fold down but I have since got that right and we are good to go. For anyone that's going to be at this point in the video is like freaking out because like this is going to take up room that I have clearance. I've already checked these legs will work and we'll have all the clearance and it will all be good. But one cool part about these legs are they're extendable so if you guys can see right here on this leg it's extendable so I can push in on this and I can move the leg up and down. Now we're gonna line up how high this needs to be to line up with the side of the uh, rack. All right, well, it might not look like it, but this floor actually is level. I mean, you can see it on the case right there, it's level. And uh, this right here, if I move it back just a little bit, I'm gonna have to go just a little bit down. They're not perfectly aligned. This is just like literally like a quarter of an inch lower, um, but that'll get us for the most part at the same level height. So now we're going to mark up basically our connectors, probably gonna mount the ones on the inside here and then worry about the ones that go into the road case next. And um, yeah, that's where we're at right now though. We'll have one side completely done and then I gotta order more stuff to do the other side, but I'll go ahead and I'll put the legs on the front side to start with. And that way I know exactly exactly where to mount connectors on the other one. But it's gonna be kind of dope. I mean, if you can see right there, this is a long table. Getting the tape measure out right there, that's a four and a half foot table. Each one of these sides is two foot nine. So two foot nine, one foot nine. So when we have this side, the stack, and the other side all put together, we're literally gonna have a seven foot plus table, probably like a little bit more than seven foot. And it is exactly 21 inches wide, so just a little bit under two feet three inches under two feet so that's a pretty massive table workstation to be able to utilize at events just with one case that's gonna be sweet could you imagine if you were like a DJ that used a facade or something like that I, I think DJs still do that but you could roll this in and you could have your center rack you have a side table to put your DJ controller and coffin and everything over here and then on the other side you could have room for whatever you want. Your lighting designer could be over there, whoever's operating your TVs, but you literally have a seven and a half foot table, pretty much, that you can utilize for whatever you want, and it all breaks down into the same road case that you're gonna use for everything.
And there we have it, one side completely done. As you guys saw there, these lock in, so you can't pop the table off on accident unless you go on the inside here, unless you pull these little two tabs here. So these two tabs will unlock it, as you can hear, and then uh, they will relock it as well, so I can unlock it and then lift it up, or it automatically goes down and locks. So what I'm probably gonna do is put a wire in between these, so that way all I have to do is reach under and pull the wire, and they both pop out at the same time, make it a little bit easier. That's pretty much it for one side. Dead on the money, nice and level, just like up here. Also level on the rack. So that's it. That is how you do a side shelf. Now obviously I don't have the lockers, these two lockers right here, for the other side. I need to check my order and make sure they just didn't short me two, or if I accidentally just forgot to order two more. But besides that, that is uh, one side done. I'm gonna go ahead and mount up the legs on the other side, and then we'll move on to labeling. So I already got the second set of legs already made and I did go ahead and order um, the other two lockers to do the other side. So I'll get around to adding the second end of this table eventually. But in the meantime, let's add some labels to this whole entire thing because a lot of stuff needs to be labeled. Like what is the front lid? What is the back lid? What is the top of the front lid? Um, those outputs on the back. So I'm gonna go through, enjoy some time lapses of me labeling stuff and I'll show you guys the finished product when I'm done. It turns out I don't have enough clearance. This was the edge that hanged out. I didn't have enough clearance, so I had an angle grinder, and now it fits. So I'm gonna file that down, hit it with some paint, and then uh, I'll catch back up with you guys when I actually get the other two sides for the top there, and uh, then we'll finish this off. Well, some time has passed, and I am back to finally finish the rack project. I got all the parts in that I needed. I even got all of my XLR cables and we can finally finish the rack project. So let me update you on what I'm gonna be doing here and then we'll jump right into it. So the shelf is cut down, the paint is dry. Just need to put uh, these side pieces on these and mount the shelf back in here. I need to install the other set of connectors right here that are gonna go on this side to mount up this side table that's gonna be on this side. And then also lastly, we need to put in all of the jumper cables. So I finally got in the jumper cables that I was telling you guys that I had coming. All you guys were telling me how I needed to get some right angle connectors and I had these on order, they just weren't here yet. So we got all the wires to clean up and all that. So I'm gonna get started on mounting up the side table first and then do the wiring and the shelf and then I can show you the finished totes and labeling and everything and show it how it all came together. Also, I know a lot of people are probably gonna be like, why do you have a ton of tubes back here? So quickly, this is a project for a possible prom at this point. I'm not sure if it's gonna end up happening or not, but I need to make sure I had them. We're using these tubes to make this. So it looks like a fake tree and you can slide these for trussing to basically make fake tree trunks. Back here is all my fake textured bark from China, tons of it. But anyways, you guys already know from the other side how this goes together so I'm just gonna time lapse and start uh, putting the connectors together. And there we go we have both table legs making us a ginormous how long is this this is super long this table from end to end is seven foot three and a half so not quite an eight foot table but man that's a lot of real estate to be able to work off of and i posted up some teasers on instagram of this and a lot of people were asking me around the idea of why why, you're not you're gonna DJ off of this like no that's not the point for this so the point is we're gonna have like the main booth somewhere or something like that and then we're gonna bring a facade yes a facade and we're gonna set this up behind the facade and this is gonna be like an area for uh, my my lighting tech so my assistant can be doing the lighting back here uh, we can have backup audio running back here but basically at weddings this is going to be a back area where people can just use this as a table it'll be good for other vendors too like the photographer can come back here set their bags and they can easily access their bags they don't have to like uh, bend down on the floor so 
that's the whole reason for doing this and obviously you don't need both sides up at once you can just do one side or the other this just allows for basically a really nice workstation that's also built into the rack so that way when you get to an event it's one less thing you have to bring you don't have to bring a table because your rack transforms into a table now we need to move on to tidying up all of the final wiring with all of my little jumpers with the right angles so i'm now going to take one of these sides off or both of these sides off because you can't really move this thing when the sides are on it because it's just giant but yeah i'm gonna move it around and start doing that and then i will reinstall the shelf and i will show you guys the final product All of the wiring is now complete. A big jumbled mess comes around here, jumps in. In retrospect, if I wasn't doing this for the first time ever, um, I would have just ordered the correct length cable from uh, my friends at NLFX to basically go up and do the right angle up here and come all the way down to the port on the other end. But being the first time building all of this, I estimated the cable length that I would need and I forgot about the drawer sliding in and out. So I was a foot short on the length that I actually needed, but no problem. It all worked out. All the cabling is good to go. Now I'm gonna bolt on the side rails to the shelf, mount the shelf. I need to fix a little bit of my labeling here and then it'll be done. And the rack is now complete. So lastly, I'm gonna walk you guys through the whole entire rack one last time, starting with the front. Get it, get it, front, and then there's a back sticker too, so that way you know which way it is when you take the lids off. But anyways, you pull out the Yamaha mixer. We have all of our inputs are right angled except for one. I was one short on my order um, that I forgot about. I forgot about number five, I don't know why, but all but one is right angled. I'll order another one, put it in there, but everything is done and everything is labeled. So right here is my left and right inputs for my DJ console. And then we have our wireless microphone right here labeled wireless. And then we have input number four and input number five. And it's on the nice slide drawer that I can then lock into place. Coming down, we have our Furman power strip. We have a Chave Show Express box, drive rack PA2, my favorite audio processing, and one Audio-Technica 3000 fourth gen um, with the availability to put a, another one in the future if I want to. And the new modification in this build we added the power strip down below, giving us an additional six outlets right here on the front that I can easily plug anything into that I need to use. And I'll tell you right now, it's been like a week since I first did the half this modifications, but having that table on the side and the outlets just makes this a great workstation here in the garage just to be able to do stuff. Um, so I really like adding that. Then if we flip it around, we have uh, not too much to see on the back here. We have our wireless router here, our antenna, as you guys saw this in the last one. All of our cabling is nice and clean. Coming down, we have our shelf here for our totes, and then all of our inputs are now labeled. So we have our low right and left, our mid right and left, our high right and left, input number four, number five, the left and right from my DJ console, and our power input via PowerCon. That is it other than the totes. So let's end this video by kind of just throwing it all together, putting it back together into its transporting form. And speaking of the totes that go into the rack, we have our totes right here and they are all labeled. This is what I like to call as a gig tote. Um, so it's got a lot of variety of stuff. This is actually a wireless mic inside of a sock. That way it doesn't get beat up. First aid kit, earplugs, extra accessories, gaff tape, knives, multi-tools, hammers, you name it. It's a little gig tote, has all the things that we need. And then below it, we have the bigger cable tote, which has all of the power and XLR cables that you could possibly need for a gig. I actually have a second gig tote right here and a second cable tote. These are literally identical, so these are the exact same as these so that way i have two different sets of basically cable totes that i can take out to any event um, if i'm not bringing this i can grab those totes but these are the totes that go into this rack so they are appropriately labeled as for audio rack 
for audio rack. This one especially because this one has the wireless microphone that goes with this. So this one's a little bit more specific for this case. It has a few more adapter cables and stuff that you possibly might need with the bigger Yamaha board. So, so these are the totes that go in here and they slide in like so. And then the little gig tote just sits on top. All right, so I put the tabletops up on here just to show you a couple more things. Uh, one, these are labeled according to what side they go on because I haven't really tested it. I, I made sure that these are somewhat in the same area in terms of where these are mounted. But this is kind of the way I wanted it. So I labeled this on the left side and this on the right side. So that way when you're at the front, left side, right side, that way you know where they go. When you put them on, again, I haven't tried to see if this table will fit on this side or that one will fit on that side. I went ahead and labeled it in case one doesn't fit on the other. So now we need to disassemble the table sides and put them on and this thing will be ready to roll out to the events. On the table legs, another cool little thing I did was I highlighted what hole the, the pin needs to go into. So that way it's a lot easier than trying to guess what hole you need to put this into. I've already got it labeled. So when you extend it out, you put it in this hole right here with the silver around it and then you just kind of slide the side and you can then slide this in and then you know where the pin needs to go when it's fully collapsed like so and then you do that to the other side again you push the pin in and you rotate the leg so that way it's off to the side push the leg down in so you get to the pin pull it back and lock it in then we just pull this out collapse it down and this is ready to go onto the audio rack. Now, if you guys remember, I had to cut the front edge of the shelf down there because it was protruding out, which I, I liked at first, but now it just wouldn't work with these table legs. And the reason for that is because of how they need to go. If I could put it on like this with where there's no table leg down there, it would work just fine, but I can't do that. I actually have to put it on like this. And the reason for that is because of the adapters we put on the actual sides themselves so that we can hook them on. You can't have these on the bottom down here because there is no room for them because they'll hit right into that bottom caster board. So you could either cut the caster board off, which I was not willing to do at all, or you could cut the shelf. So I cut the shelf. That way it all fits nice and smoothly. So I'll lock this down, get the other side tore down, we'll be good to go. All right guys, that is all for the second edition of modifications to the brand new audio rack. Um, it's pretty much now complete. This thing is dope because literally it's everything you need for an event minus your DJ coffin and any lighting or trussing that you might be bringing or a facade. Everything is built into this, it's, it's dope. This is exactly what I wanted for my events. I did wanna point out, a lot of people on the last video commented and said, well, let me see, carry it up some stairs. That's, that's not the point for this thing. If you remember in my whole DJ booth video, this thing is not meant to go to those very like remote portable events like Friends Farm, we're always out there all the time. I'm just gonna bring the bun booth back there that breaks down and that's all I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna plug my speakers directly into the SZ and be done. It's a small, simple event. I don't need all of the crazy audio processing and stuff that this thing does. This is meant for big weddings, Weddings where we have easy load ins and load outs and for our bigger production stuff. If you guys remember, I do a lot of production stuff, um, especially on the school dance side. Well, who knows with this whole Corona thing, but that's why I have this because it basically is a production rig and it can be used for mobile events. So it's a very flexible piece of hardware that I have that is gonna allow me to basically build my business off of this because it has a lot of features for both areas. So that is the purpose of this. It's not meant for those events where we got stairs and it's remote. It is designed to roll into a trailer and roll into events. It's not designed for stairs or any of that bullshit. So that's, that's what that is. I hope you guys though, Enjoy this video. I hope you guys got some ideas. Again, I'll link everything that I did in this video, especially these little hardware pieces right here that you can attach to your light cases and stuff and make tables out of them. So 
I'll link all that down in the description down below. Please slap that like button if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the tutorial. These videos take forever to make because literally how long it takes me to do this times that by two to be able to actually film it. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to slap that like button. It really helps a lot um, for the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all the new awesome projects that are be coming as well as a full year walkthrough of this garage whenever I get it cleaned up. And I'm doing a little project over here actually. I'm going to be starting that tonight with electrical in the truss. So stay tuned. But anyways guys, like always, my name is Diedrich Webb. Keep them records spinning and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe.